11 NBA players who aren't really as good as we once thought. We used to think these guys were either much better or gonna become a lot better. But as it turns out, that hasn't really happened. And a great example of that would be a guy like John Collins. I mean, you look at the fact that he was once 22 years old and had broken out as the perfect star alongside Trey Young. He averaged 21 points, 10 rebounds, 58% from the field, and 40% from three. These were all extremely good numbers for a power forward. And to come from a guy that was only 22, well, it was no wonder they gave him a five-year, $125 million contract. He looked like he had a star career ahead of him. The only thing is that he's gotten worse in nearly every category ever since then. His field goal percentage, three-point percentage, points, and rebounds have fallen year after year every single season since that breakout year. To the point now where he just averaged 13 and 6 on 50% from the field and 29% from three. It's almost unimaginable to think about the fact that the Hawks gave $125 million to John Collins, then just two years later they have to trade him away just to get rid of his salary. A lot of us thought John was going to be something special, but he's kind of turned out to be a flop and has to make you start to question whether or not it's a work ethic thing. But who knows, maybe the Utah Jazz can turn him back around. I think another big man we can all agree that isn't nearly as good as we thought he was or was going to be is Carl Anthony Towns. When he first got drafted into the NBA, he was expected to have a superstar career. And early on, he was even in discussions as the best big man in the league. As a 7 foot center that regularly shoots over 40% from 3, with the ability to average 25 and 12, he was impressive and that always put Towns second or third in talks for the best big man in the league. But that's gone nowhere and it's at the point now where nobody really cares where Town ranks across the NBA. I mean, him playing with Jimmy Butler and getting called out for no work ethic kind of cost him all of his credibility and from then on out he's just been exposed as being a soft player. His Timberwolves teams never win and his seasons are always too inconsistent with him going back and forth on making the all-star team and not. And I think everyone can agree that a player with his size and skill set should be so much better than he actually is by now. I also think that Julius Randle's another guy that had a lot of people fooled. Now let's get this straight. Randle's made a good career for himself. He didn't get any chances on the Lakers. He outperformed expectations on the Pelicans and it led to a big leap when joining the Knicks. Shout out to him for getting to where he is when he didn't have the greatest start to his career. But with that said, I think he may have had people fooled for a little while. Because in 2021, Randle had his best season to date. It was a breakout year where he averaged 24 and 10 a game on a hot 41% from three. He made the All-Star team and led his team to the playoffs. That year, every Everything was looking up and it was at the point where people started to have hopes that Julius Randle was going to be the new breakout star in the league. But he had a major collapse in the postseason and it was a majorly disappointing way to end such a high profile year for him. Then the exact same thing pretty much happened this season. The best stats of his career, another all-star appearance, leads his team to the playoffs with Brunson, then just has a postseason collapse. So I don't think we're going to be considering Julius a superstar anymore going forward. But let's actually get a couple things straight here. The first is that the man just doesn't know how to work out of a double team and that's his biggest weakness. The second is that he was never actually thought of as a superstar, which is why he only signed a deal for 20 million a year a few seasons back. He didn't sign any max contracts or anything, and I'd say he still outperformed what was expected of him, so it's not bad. But I'd also say Trey Young's in a similar boat, in the fact that he's massively outperformed his expectations coming into his career. But since then the perception of him has kind of fallen off. You see his second season was massive, putting up 29 and 9, becoming an all-star and making it look like a solid move that he was traded for Luka. Then even the next year, his postseason run and series against the Knicks elevated him to a star status. Last season, he was even an all-star again, but then this year, he wasn't. Listen, I understand how great of a player Trey Young is, but coming into the league, he was compared to Steph Curry and thought to be this superstar player. Well, last season, Trey Young shot the same percentage from the field that Steph shot from three. He doesn't play off ball like Steph. He has a tendency to just get shut out when bigger players guard him, and he's just been pretty inconsistent. The Hawks have had a lot of solid players on their squad, and they even got him another all-star to play with, but it made zero difference in terms of team success. It's definitely not over for Trey, but I think it's at the point where he's been getting overrated and most players in the league agree. I think Brandon Ingram's another guy that goes under the radar, but definitely deserves a mention in this video. Because don't get me wrong, he's a great player, but he just hasn't been as good as we thought he was gonna. Because coming into the NBA, he was being hyped up as the next Kevin Durant. He had long arms, he was skinny, even got drafted second overall, but is now going into year eight and has only ever been an all-star once and just averaged a career high 24 points a game. I think he's just gonna continue to get better and he's still a young player. He's just nowhere near Kevin Durant level like a lot of people thought he would be. Paul George is another guy that maybe we thought would be better by now and it's simply for one reason. Dating back to his 2018 and 19 season where he averaged 28, 8, 4, and 2 and was in the top 3 for both MVP and Defensive Player of the Year. PG was 28 at the time and I think during this season a lot of people got the impression that George had finally come into his own and become the league's next great superstar that we were 
gonna get to see perform at this level from here on out. But that didn't happen, and instead, that season for OKC has stood as by far the best season of his career, and it hasn't been close. Because since then, he's joined the Clippers, missed the All-Star game two times, only played in 58% of his games, and been kind of forgettable at times on the Clippers. So I guess it turns out that that just may have been a fluke season for Paul George. Another guy that's still great, but maybe not as good as we thought, is Klay Thompson. Just for the fact that I think a lot of people anticipated that he'd return from his injuries and could still be the same Klay Thompson. But the truth is, he hasn't. If you just look at the stats, I mean, he's picked up exactly where he left off, and that's a good thing. But on the court, he just doesn't have the same impact that he used to, which is why he made five straight all-star teams before the injuries and has yet to make one in his two seasons back. His defense is a little slower, his explosiveness is a step behind what it was, and there's nothing wrong with that. You couldn't expect him to come back the same after an Achilles tear. All I'm saying, though, is that if you thought he was going to be the same Klay Thompson, then you are wrong. While on the other hand, another former Warriors player in James Wiseman has never really been the person we thought, or the Warriors especially thought he would be early on. If the Warriors knew he was going to come in and be a 10-5 and five guy in his first three years, they wouldn't have taken him second overall over LaMelo. Now, Wiseman was a superstar in high school basketball, and he never got to play college, which is where the Warriors should have backed off. The man didn't play any competitive basketball after high school and still got taken second, because that's how much potential the Warriors saw in him. But the Warriors have made it clear they're trying to win now, so if they didn't think he was going to come in straight away and help the team, they wouldn't have drafted him. But his 11 points, 5 rebounds, and multiple G League experiences in Season 1 was not what Golden State expected. And it was so bad that they basically traded him for Gary Payton the second. Well, now he's starting on the Pistons and is having about the same efficiency. He could still have a very bright future ahead of him, but he wasn't as good as Golden State expected him to be right away. Now another young player is Scotty Barnes, who obviously is going into his third season in the league. But I think he's another young player people might start to worry about. And it's just because of the fact that in his rookie year, the man was looking great. He easily won rookie of the year. He's essentially been given the chance to take OG Ananobi's spot in the starting lineup. In year one, his defense was great. He was shooting and making a lot of mid-range shots to silence everyone that said he couldn't shoot. So obviously, he seemed like a player that would take a big leap in year two. But instead, he got worse. He shot 28% from three this past season and was now getting left wide open for mid-range. And for most of the season, Toronto was playing better team defense with him on the bench. The effort just wasn't there for him and it showed, which leaves things really up in the air right now on if he's going to be a great star one day or not, but we'll have to wait and see. Then finally, we have to mention Bradley Beal. Listen, I was always a fan of Beal, but I think we all collectively used to think he was a much better player or at least was going to become one. You see, when he was playing alongside John Wall, he was the second option and it was great. Well, when John started getting his injuries, Bradley was left alone and the Wizards were bad. So on those bad teams, Beal elevated to becoming the guy and having two seasons putting up over 30 points a game, and convinced the entire league that he was the real deal and just stuck on a bad team. Well, then the Wizards started giving him help and nothing changed. The team was still terrible. I mean, a roster with guys like Spencer Dinwiddie, Kristaps Porzingis, Rui Hachimura, and Kyle Kuzma should have been better than it was. And let's also not forget that Bradley Beal was really one of the only guys whose stats never recovered after the league's new rules on drawing fouls and flopping back at the start of 2021. Scorers like Damian Lillard and Trey Young's numbers dropped, but they eventually recovered. Now, two years later, Beals never have, and he's still averaging just 23 points a game. I'm not saying he's now a bad player by any means. I'm actually really interested to see the Phoenix Suns play this year, but I don't know if Beals the same superstar type player like he let on a few years ago when he was putting up 31 a game. Is there anyone you think I missed? Comment down below and let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next video.